Good afternoon. My name is Father Jose Cabrera. I am the pastor at All Saints Parish in Bay City. And I had the honor of having Kevin in our parish for a long period of time, especially during the lockdown. So um, great, great experiences and a beautiful journey in the priesthood, in his case with the diaconate as a seminarian. So it's a great honor that uh, Kevin asked me to preach this first mass. I'm gonna be talking to you, Kevin, so if you don't mind, do you, want, do you mind sitting by mom and dad for a minute? I think mom will like that. You don't really have a choice, so. <laughs> mom is happy. <laughs> All right, I actually have uh, your ordination gift. I'm gonna give it to you, uh, Kevin. I hope you like it, Kevin. You didn't know there was going to be an unboxing video during the homily of your first mass. <laughs> okay, there is, a, there is a brick. It's a memorial brick that says it's just a stepping stone with the ordination date of Kevin. All right. But actually, besides that stepping stone that you have there, Kevin, now your mom can open. We actually have a memorial brick with your name, Father Kevin Wojciechowski. And it is at the entrance of Langley Hall of All, of All Saints Parish, our St. James site. So when you go to our parish next week for one of your 25 masses of Thanksgiving, <laughs> you can see it there. So. So it's just a stepping stone. So I figure that we can keep that theme of stepping stones and the readings of today. You know, Kevin, becoming a priest is not just a stepping stone. Um, actually, it's a milestone. But it is not a milestone of success or achievement. It is not a participation trophy. It is not what the world sees as a promotion. Becoming a priest is actually becoming a building block for the church, a solid foundation whose cornerstone is Jesus. The first letter of Peter says, you yourselves like living stones are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer a spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Actually, in another part of the Bible, in the letter to the Ephesians, we hear you are strangers and aliens no longer. No, you are fellow citizens of the saints and members of the household of God. You form a building that rises on the foundation of the apostles and of the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is fitted together and takes the shape as a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are being built into this temple to become a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. Yesterday, as you gave me the honor of vesting you, and as your brother priests were welcoming you into the Presbyterate of Saginaw, the choir was singing the song, This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And that's Jesus right there for you, Kevin. It's not about you, it's about Jesus. By conforming your life to Jesus, you too will experience rejection, just like that stone that was rejected by the builders. Most of the time you will be welcomed, but at times you will be marginalized, not necessarily because of you, but because you're a priest. During those days of loneliness, never forget the solid foundation upon which your life is being built, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. In the first reading of today, we hear that Apollos came all the way from Alexandria to Ephesus. So that is from, from Egypt to Turkey. You, Kevin, came to us 
from Davison to Saginaw. In the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that Apollos was an expert of scripture and that he traveled far away to talk about Jesus. It was like his first assignment. Soon, Kevin, you too will move to your first assignment. And once that assignment ends, you will go to a new assignment and eventually to another and eventually to another. Remember that you will go to people's parishes. It is their parish, not yours, because they were there before you. Apollos did a great job at Ephesus, but he also served at Corinth. In a way, he tagged in with St. Paul. Eventually, St. Paul will write a letter to the community in Corinth saying to them, I planted Apollos watered, but God caused the growth. In your future assignments, you will be watering on soil that someone else planted. Don't overestimate your personal knowledge, though. Seek after the truth, yes, always. But most importantly, be open to learn from your parishioners. The reading of the Acts of the Apostles tells us that Priscilla and Aquila took Apollos aside. Your future parishioners will take you aside too. Sometimes they will corner you and they will close the door behind. And they will tell you a couple of things. That private conversation between Priscilla and Aquila with Apollos made of Apollos actually a better evangelizer. And that's it. That's how we built each other up. Parishioners and clergy, clergy and parishioners, because we are living stones in God's house. But the cornerstone is always Jesus. Sometimes the stones can become obstacles. In Greek, they are called escandalon, scandalon, stumbling block. Sometimes sin will lead you to become a stumbling block for the people of God. There is no greater fear in my heart than to know that someone stopped loving God because of me. Be afraid of that too. Whenever your ego, your sinfulness, or anything else becomes in you a stumbling block between God and the people, make sure to go to confession. And make sure to offer sacrifices for your people so that the mercy of God may shatter any kind of stumbling blocks. Always remember that even if your heart gets hardened by worldly desires and concerns, remember that the Lord always is there ready to remove any stony heart and to put instead a heart of flesh after his own image. A couple more thoughts. We are nearing the end of the Easter season. And the resurrection accounts tells us that the women, upon arriving to the tomb, we're saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Kevin, with your priesthood, be that rolling stone. With your priesthood, you are called to roll the stone away from the tomb so that the fullness of the resurrection of Jesus may be visible to the people of God. Finally, in today's gospel, which is John 16, Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. Therefore, Kevin, as you begin your journey of the priesthood, ask the Father to give you a heart that is so inflamed of his love, that everyone who gets to be blessed with your priesthood may come to love Jesus more. And that's it. That's all you need to do, is to help people to love Jesus more. I have been a priest for 14 years now, and the priesthood is much more than what I initially expected. It's the most beautiful calling. And each day it gets better. So thank you for saying yes to the Lord. And may God bless you in the days ahead. God bless you, Kevin. We love you.